Welcome to CBS This Morning. We begin with this. It's very scary stuff. The deadly coronavirus outbreak that started in Wuhan, China, is spreading faster, raising new concerns all around the globe. Hospitals in China are packed with anxious crowds and markets in some areas. They're running out of things to sell. Ten Chinese cities with a combined population of around 33 million people, think about that for a second, are now off limits. In an extraordinary scene from Wuhan at the center of this outbreak, a massive construction effort to build a new hospital with hopes to have it finished by Monday. The State Department is warning Americans not to travel to that part of China. Amazing pictures there. Here in the U.S., 10 possible patients in California, one in Texas, and one in Tennessee are in isolation awaiting CDC test results. At least 26 people have died in China, and more than 800 are infected in at least eight countries right now. Ramy Innocencio is in Beijing for us on the eve of the Lunar New Year there. That is China's busiest travel season on the order of 400 million expected to be on the move. Ramy, good morning. What's the response where you are? Good morning. That's right. Beijing's motto might as well be keep calm and carry on. But quickly, Chinese state media broadcast Chinese President Xi Jinping enjoying a relaxed and a festive Chinese New Year banquet. But that also is, stands in stark contrast to the jarring pictures we've been seeing coming out of those lockdown cities. Not only that, we're getting word now that many major cultural events to celebrate the holiday have been canceled. Not only that, next to me, uh, Beijing's Forbidden City, famous around the world, stands dark, and it is closed to tourists as of tomorrow. This is how people in Wuhan are responding to the city's lockdown. Turmoil at the supermarkets as shelves go bare and massive overcrowding in waiting rooms to get screened at the hospital. This woman cries out for a doctor to save her life after finding out she has a fever. Residents are growing more fearful by the day of catching the deadly virus. It's quiet. Even inside of my apartment, it's never this quiet. American Scott Alice is an English teacher in Wuhan. The government shut his school down, but he says he's more concerned for people outside Wuhan, including in the U.S. It's locked down, but it's not locked down tight enough. That's the part that I'm, I think I'm most concerned with is that people are still finding ways out of the city. Back in the United States, another possible case has popped up in eastern Texas. Health officials expect to find out this weekend if the patient who had traveled to Wuhan is infected. If there's a confirmed case, contact tracing will begin uh, and all contacts will be monitored for development of symptoms. But as the number of patients explodes, the World Health Organization has so far declined to declare the outbreak a global health emergency. Now the race to create a vaccine is on. Well, the, the first thing we have to prove is that we can create a vaccine faster than certainly we ever have before. At Moderna Therapeutics, just outside Boston, President Stephen Hogue and his team of scientists are working with the National Institutes of Health to research the coronavirus. But to distribute a vaccine globally, Hogue says they need federal help. There are going to be a continuing stream of public health threats, viruses that jump into humans from other species. And the longer we wait to respond, the bigger that threat becomes. And that rising threat has even pushed Shanghai Disneyland to close its doors. Not only that, as well as 70,000 cinemas across the country. That is every single one, Anthony. Wow, Raymond wow. Innocencio for us in Beijing with uh, everything about that story is alarming. Mm -hmm.